Horizon Worlds version 41 includes a massive update. We finally have the wrist camera, and last week we got Arena Clash, an epic teams right. battle with global leaderboards. What the heck, Oculus? You're over level 100? I hope you'll be seeing some of these new tools and features coming to all of us creators. Some sooner than later, as we just got the projectile launcher gizmo. Full tutorial on that coming up at the end of the video. Yeah, Have you checked go. out World Top yeah, recently? We just got another yeah. mini game, and there are so many I still haven't seen. More voice settings? This caught me off guard. I am so excited for mute and whisper settings. We have some really powerful new tools to keep our conversations private and even silence anyone who's being a nuisance. Or you could use these to make some quiet spaces like a library. The script gizmo got a visual update to help clear up indenting and to help support these brand new code blocks for else and else if. You'll also notice the operators tab is now in two columns. You can now send delayed events with parameters. This is going to be hugely beneficial to anybody who's sending delayed events, consider loops, and so much more. Let's talk about the new projectile launcher gizmo. This allows you to easily create responsive launching mechanics without needing to manage projectiles. New projectiles spawn at the gizmo's current position and are aimed in the gizmo's orientation. There are several properties you can customize, including speed, collision type, gravity, scale, and color. Speed sets the launch speed in meters per second. Player collision determines whether it can collide with all players, no players, or all players except for the owner of the gizmo. An object collision sets what it can collide with that's an object, either no objects, all objects except for the launcher's group, or all objects. Static collision toggles whether or not it can collide with static objects and still cause a trigger collision event. Gravity changes how the projectile falls, it can even fall upwards. Scale changes the projectile's size and the visual trail width. Color changes what the projectile trail looks like and can even be set with your paintbrush tool or the paint action from your scripting panel. To go along with the projectile launcher, we have a few new code blocks. Under events, we have when projectile hits player, which is triggered when a player collision is detected. When projectile hits interactive object is triggered when an interactive object collision is detected, and when projectile hits static object is triggered when a static object collision is detected. Please note, these events are received on the projectile launcher gizmo. This means the script either needs to be attached to the gizmo or the gizmo should be connected or listened to from the controlling script. Under actions, we have launch projectile, which fires a projectile from the gizmo. We also have launch projectile at speed, which fires a projectile from the gizmo with a custom speed, and set projectile gravity allows you to change the gizmo's gravity strength. Take a look at this awesome That's volcano. These projectiles are 0% animation capacity? How can that be? Honestly thinking it might be a bug. Before we look at the script, please drop a like and subscribe for more tutorials. Hit that bell if you'd like notifications, and comment your username if you'd like a copy of this volcano and canon assets. Amazing. Now let's get to the Volcano Script breakdown, and after that we're going to do a tutorial on building the cannon. On our Volcano Script, when the world is started, we send loop to self after one second. Notice that new parameter slot. Love that. When loop is received, we then paint with a random color. We start by converting an HSV to RGB. We then plug in new color from RGB, which is actually HSV since we're converting it. Then we use random number between 0 and 0 0.2 to make sure it's somewhere between red and orange. We then use random number between 0.6 and 1 to set the saturation, and and then again for setting the value, which determines how bright and how dark it is. Awesome. Having multicolored tabs. Look at that. So awesome seeing that like fly out. And then we rotate with a new rotation. And so what I've had to do here is type in my origin rotation. Normally I'd set this when world is started, but because I'm running this on the gizmo, the gizmo seems to have a weird bug where it like changes rotation. So I set origin rotation from my properties panel over here, which is 27000, and that's pointing straight upwards. Then I add the new rotation, which is from XYZ with random integer between negative 45 and 45 with zero in the Y slot, and then again, negative 45 to 45 in the Z slot. And this gives us a random rotation like this and a conical shape pointing upwards. So that's how we get all of that kind of random direction. We then launch projectile from self at speed random integer between 1 and 20 meters per second. So that's how we get the different variations for how fast and how far it's flying. 
And you'll notice that we've set the gravity on the projectile itself, so it does have that kind of nice falling off. And the gravity is currently set to 10. Check this new if out. I love the new color, and we also have else. Please note, to use else, it has to be placed below if. So you'll note if I put it in here, it doesn't work. It has to be below the if, which is kind of difficult to do. As you can see, it's like, it must follow an if, and you're like, it doesn't go below. So if you drag it up, you can then drag your if above, and that's currently the easiest way. Hopefully they get that fixed soon. So in our if statement, we're checking to see if a random integer between 1 and 100 is less than 10. This is basically giving us a 10% chance that this will happen. And in this 10% chance, what we do is send loop to self with a random integer between 10 and 20 seconds. This gives us a much longer delay. But 90% of the time, in our else statement, we send loop to self with a random number that's with decimals between 0.3 and 3 seconds. So what this allows us to do is get a lot of things happening all right after each other. It just looks absolutely marvelous. On the projectile launcher itself, we aren't affecting the speed because we're changing this in the script. Player collisions I've turned off, object collisions I've turned off, and static collisions I've turned off because we don't really need to use these. We do have gravity set to 10 as I mentioned before. Scale is set to 0.5 so that gives these kind of large half meter uh, really big and you can see the trail is pretty big too. The color is being constantly changed by the script so I didn't set that in here. And then you can see I've attached the script directly to the projectile launcher and so that's where Volcano is down here with the origin rotation plugged in there. And you can find your rotation for an origin from here on the attributes tab. So I just plugged in what the numbers were here into there, which was originally 270. Let's build a quick cannon. And this cannon's just gonna fire a projectile on a loop similar to this, but without changing color, just a little more simple. The first thing we're gonna do is head into our gizmos tab. We're gonna pull out the new projectile launcher gizmo as well as a script gizmo. And so I just want to scale these up a little bit just so I can see them. Please note that the uh, arrow here isn't actually visible. And so where it's going to spawn is probably at the center of this object. So if we're looking at it from this cannon here, the cannonball will fire from here. Please note with these being collidable, it's important that this arrow is not inside of the cannon, but it's actually outside. Otherwise it'll collide and it won't fire correctly. Okay, so we've got our arrow set up correctly. We're gonna pull it out here. Let's determine a speed. So I think a speed of 20 is really, really strong. So we should actually go with something more like 15. And then player collisions, we're gonna turn these off for this example today. Static collisions are also gonna be turned off. Gravity is gonna be set to 8.5, so it's gonna represent relatively normal gravity. And then our scale, we're gonna to set to 0.4. And then our color, we want to set to zero. We just want this to be a really dark cannonball. Awesome, we've set up our projectile launcher gizmo. Now in our script, we're gonna go ahead and call this cannon loop. Okay, we've set up the cannon loop script and when world is started, we wanna create a loop. So we're gonna come over here to when event is received. You'll also note that event actions have been moved up to the top. Love that, thank you guys so much. Send event with delay, we're gonna drag into here and down into here. We already created the loop event, so it's in this drop down. but if you need to create a new one, you click the plus symbol and then type in loop. There we go, and now it's available in all of our drop downs, so we can just grab that from here and there. Now we're sending this loop every one second, but one second is probably too frequent and probably too regular. For a cannon, you're not really looking to have this happen all the time on a very consistent basis. So if you go to our operators tab, that's the plus symbol up here, you're going to find random number. We're going to plug that into our delay slot and we're going to choose a random number between one second and I don't know, 60 seconds. So it'll be kind of infrequent, like an average of every 30 seconds. And for our demo today, we'll set this to six seconds. So that way you don't have to wait. Okay. So we've got this set up. This is going to be running on the launcher. So if we go to our actions tab, this is where we're going to find the new projectile launcher and projectile launcher at speed. So let's go grab launch projectile, drop it in our loop. We're gonna launch this from self. Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> should we just try that? So we come up to our projectile launcher, hit cannon loop, and look at that, we've got a cannonball. That is so cool. Now, if only we had a way to turn the trail off, but really, that is pretty freaking fantastic. So I love that. I love the arc. And there's so much more you can do simply by adjusting the properties. If you guys have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Please be sure to leave them in the comments. If you guys want to copy this world, leave your username in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you in Horizon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Bubbly, 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 bubs. I like bubbles. Bubbles are real good. Bubbles are real fun.